video, we'll be going through the process of creating a gold image through VWorkspace. Here are the uh, steps required to create a reference image that we'll be working through in this demonstration. As you can see, VWorkspace um, has some firewall requirements. Quest's primary recommendation is that you disable the firewall totally. Not sure that I agree with that, but if you don't want to, there's the ports that you need to open up both ways. When you're creating your master image as well, when you try to import it, if you use a VHDX format, then you'll receive this warning message. So if you're going to use VHDX to optimize the way that Hyper-V handles the disk, then do pre-create the disk first using these commands. Equally, one of the steps you will see is we get the choice when provisioning virtual machines to use instant provisioning rather than sysprep. If you are going to use instant provisioning, then do visit this site, documents.software.del.com slash doc52699. And that will explain to you how to run licensing, volume licensing and KMS licensing in an image, how to handle the image that is provisioned with instant provisioning, how, how you can license your software products. Okay, let's go to the lab and start building this image. As you can see, we're going to create a template in Hyper-V. We could use SCVMM. The only difference between using SCVMM and Hyper-V is that in SCVMM, you'd have to convert it to a template before you could use it within V workspace. So all that we do is right click at Hyper-V server, new virtual machine. I shall call mine W2K12R2 gold, and I'll place that in a folder that I created earlier. Next, must be generation one. V Workspace doesn't understand generation two virtual machines. The reason being is that generation two will boot off of a SCSI interface and it needs to boot off of an IDE interface. So use generation one virtual machines. Oops. Assign some RAM to this. The RAM that we set here, or that we set for our template, will be what will be used to deploy the virtual machines within V workspace. So we can set that later. So next, and I'll attach a hard disk later. That will therefore go away and it will create our virtual machine here. What we need to do then is we need to create a virtual disk and we need to create the virtual disk using the command line that I showed you earlier. So if we go to PowerShell, new VHD path and the path where I would like to write this to is that path there. So if I paste that in and we also want the name of the VHDX file that we'll create. So that's w2k12r2gold.vhdx. Best practice is to make it a dynamic disk because the disk won't be expanding under use, not when users are using it, because it'll just be copied across and read from, not written to. Uh, size in bytes, so you can make the disk as large as you like. I go for a 60 gig disk it will make it 4 meg at the start mine's logical sector size bytes 512 physical sector size bytes 4096 and the important one and the reason why we're doing all this block size bytes to make. So if we press return on that, that will go and create our hard disk in the background for make hard disk nice and empty. We can then install our operating system onto that virtual machine, the same as your normal, and I'll be back with you as soon as that's done. And here we are back again, having installed the operating system. I've added the server to the domain because I want to demonstrate to you inst installing instant provisioning. I've installed the remote desktop services role. I've patched 
the server and I've installed Office as an application. Uh, the next step is to install Adobe Flash Player if you need Adobe Flash Player. In the enterprise, this needs to be licensed. You can license Adobe Flash Player for your business, your concern, by visiting this URL the enterprise deployment URL and that will take you through and you can therefore um, apply to distribute flash player by filling out their license form. Do note that in 2012 flash player comes installed inside Internet Explorer already and if you want to check that you have the right version you can click on the link to find the version number and check whether you have Flash Player installed. Those links are available from the original page we visited and the link I've shown you. Adobe.com go get Flash Player to download it. So we have Flash installed. What we need to do now is enable remote desktop, which is enabled by default because we've installed um, remote desktop services on our server. So we can click through and you'll notice that remote desktop is enabled. However, what you'll also see is that it isn't, it's only enabled for administrators. So we need to add in the group, whoever we want to be able to connect. I tend to use domain users rather than authenticated users. The choice is yours or you can set up a specific group. Equally, we should allow remote assistance can't do that because that is a uh, feature that needs adding in. So we go through, click through, uh, and scroll down, and we can accept remote assistance, and that will install that for us. Once that installation is complete, and we'll come back when it is, I'll show you that the tick box is ticked. Now that the remote assistance feature has been installed, we can access our advanced settings again and you'll notice it's now ticked and you can either use a GPO or manually set the settings that you like. Next on our list then is to install the uh, Quest RDS role on the server. In the previous videos you've seen me copying across the binaries to install locally. I'm not going to do that this time and the reason is, is that this gold image will be copied down to our hypervisor as, as a read-only image, if you will, for each of our VMs to run off. So it's running locally off the hypervisor disks. If we copy the binaries across, all that we do is make the disk bigger, the disk that needs copying across bigger. So what I should do is I shall instead map a network drive across to where I have the binaries located. And from our map drive, we can drill down to where we've copied the binaries to the V workspace disk and run auto run and just follow the wizard through as before and that will allow us to install the RDS role and the core role and indeed it will install the management console on the server. So click through, accept the license agreement so here will be licensed to, as before, accept the advanced method of installation. And this time we'll just be installing the terminal server RDS, RD session host role. And notice it does confirm that the management console role will also be installed and the core binaries. Click next. Would you like bi-directional audio enabled? So by default say yes. Connect to an existing database, and we can then connect through to the database that we created in an earlier video. Mine is held on sql1.example.com, and because the database exists, we don't need to supply SA credentials, but we do need to supply the credentials for the service account, the SQL based service account that we set up to connect to the database. That will just take a few moments to install the prerequisites 
and the actual software itself and we'll be right back when that's done. Now that the installation is completed, click on finish, you'll be invited once again to download and at minimum apply the mandatory hotfixes. Uh, as you know, this is a trial version that I'm using and so you're not allowed to download hotfixes for that. So we'll just uh, skip past that. After the installation is complete, you need to restart your computer. We'll be back shortly. And now that the server's rebooted, we can see that the Workspace Management Console has been installed as well as the RDS role and a shortcut has been placed on the desktop. This, this means that this will be a, available for all users to try and attempt to start the console, if, especially if you haven't locked it down. So what we can do is we can go onto the C drive users and there's a public user in there can't see the start menu files so if we show hidden files the start menu files the desktop I mean if we show hidden files then we can see the desktop and there's our shortcut and if we delete that out it goes off the desktop next thing for us to do is to um, install the PN tools so as before because I want to keep my image as small as I can I'm going to map a network drive across I want to run PN tools, which will be in the PN tools directory. So if I simply run that up, and it's a very straightforward installation, we accept the license agreement. And if I perform a custom installation, you'll see what PN tools does. It installs the functionality inside the image for doing certain things, such as it installs the universal print driver if you don't want to use the manufacturer's own print drivers, it enables USB redirection, multimedia redirection, enables user profile management by way of the workspace so that you don't have to use traditional roaming profiles and enables flash multimedia redirection. This will complain as it won't detect flash being installed, but flash is installed on, on our server as you've seen inside the Internet Explorer itself. So if we click through, there you get that message and we can install PN tools. Once PN tools is installed, we can move to install the instant provisioning tool if you want to use instant provisioning. The difference between instant provisioning and... Okay, so we'll just quickly stop that service in the background. The difference between instant provisioning and sysprep is that instant provisioning is a lot quicker. It's quite some way of doing things. Sysprep, of course, you're fully supported. You may know better how it works and possibly has more functionality that you can use um, for configuring your environment. So it depends what you want, speed, or the ability to manipulate the environment more. So that's the PN tools installed, which requires a reboot. We're going to reboot just now. What we will do is we will go to the template tools and um, run up instant provisioning. And again, very similar installation to the PN tools. It says that it has a requirement of the .NET framework, which will installed if it doesn't already exist. Quest make clear to you that this should only be installed on the master template virtual machine, what we're calling our gold image. Accept license, install, very quick installation. And we can now run the desktop optimizer. I won't run the desktop optimizer just now. What I will do is quickly reboot the server because of the PN tools. And then I'll show you how we do our final optimization. And now we're at the final running. Just one or two things still to do. The first thing is to either let the ports through the firewall or just simply disable the firewall as per Quest recommendations. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to turn the firewall off. Earlier in the video, I showed you which ports need to be disabled, and that can be achieved with group policy objects. So that's the firewall disabled. Two more things still to do. One, if we go back onto our server, I still have my map drive. Come through to our V workspace folder, then in our template tools, you will find the Quest V Workspace Desktop Optimizer. And if we were to run that, 
then what this does is it sets a number of registry keys for us. So this is Quest's default recommendation. So for example, disable auto updates that the server's not trying to update itself while people are using it as a desktop because you would want to update your gold image and redistribute that. Disable the log on screen saver because no one can see it because it's a virtual desktop, things like that. So if we run that through, you can change the settings if you wish, but that's done. So that's optimized their desktop as per Quest's best practice. Last, which I won't show you here, is prepping the image for things such as antivirus, where antivirus reads a GUID out of the registry. If that still remains in place, it sees each iteration of the server that's deployed from the image as being the same server and so won't update your antivirus. Similar situation with software such as SCCM, any applications that you've got that are doing the same thing. You may also want to apply other optimizations. Once we've run through that, all that remains to do for us is to disconnect my network drive. So it won't appear in the gold image. Make sure that we've, um, well, let's just shut down the virtual machine, but make sure that this has been ejected so we don't have any CD rooms in the drive. And then let's shut down the virtual machine. And that's it. That's our image created, ready for preparing. In the next video, I'll show you how to present that up to the hypervisors so that you have your virtual machines, your virtual desktops ready and waiting for users to connect to.